Yo. Am I am I not up in this bitch? You're on right now. We're gonna start recording right now. The champ is here. Let's, Let's go. Congratulations, my friend. Appreciate it, boys. What's up? What's up, kids? Just chilling. <laughs> Try not to get yelled at for doing your podcast. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Tell Tough Brit, time right now. Tell Britt we love her and that she's an angel letting you do this, and we miss her very much. Just send George like a new uh, onesie or something. She'll probably forgive you. I could do that. I would send him a bunch. We got some sweet stuff coming out for Black Friday. We'll get you an uh, express order. Black Try to raise Friday. money for the fund. Yeah, we get ahead on that shit. What's up? What's up? Uh, congratulations. Appreciate you. How are you feeling right now? Like you feel you like on top of the world right now? Nah, I'm hung over as shit today. <laughs> I saw B. I saw B. Rob's post to Instagram. The whole crew. Yeah, they showed up. Britt kind of like rallied them all to come here right after the kids went to bed, and I came down from putting Kate to bed, and like 15 of them were down in my man cave, and they were ready to roll. <laughs> Those and, guys are uh, looking for any reason to do that. Any reason, and. uh yeah, the, the text message thread today was quite hilarious of all the idiot things they came up with to not have to work. <laughs> it's quite yeah. entertaining. Just super hungover, trying to do everything that they can to do. One, one guy's a funeral director. He was supposed to be meeting a family at 9 a.m. He was like, I, I can't, I'm out of excuses for this one. I don't know which one to use on this. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, that's tough Monday. That's a real tough Monday. The um, ripple effect of a Kisner victory is massive. It really just <laughs> isn't a whole Well, goal. Aiken, like no work gets done in the in the city of Aiken, South Carolina that day. No, nah, it's all over. Front page of the paper, well, guess what the headline is? This ain't no hobby. Oh, oh, yeah. That's great. And that's like all because of y'all putting that one – do you remember how that came about? That one freaking text message or DM he sent y'all like six years ago? Mm-hmm. Yeah, from Wingfoot. Yeah, but some random dude sent it to you, right? That's right. Yeah, he DM'd it to me. I think I or whoever was running it. I think then we just screenshotted it, put it on, and it went it went nuts. And now, I mean, how many? How often do people yell, ain't no hobby at you? It's outrageous. <laughs> Richie Rowinski's caddy in Detroit bet me to on the first tee over under at a hundred and i took the over and he said we were over at the turn yeah <laughs> that's all right it's just a it's it, well the story is great and it's just a great thing to say because it's it's yeah. so hilarious and cocky did you steal that <laughs> did you steal that from anybody else or did you come up with that i don't even recall dude pretty sure i probably was just me i'm sure somebody else will tell me that i some of your fanboys will probably tell me wherever I got it from, but they're your fanboys too now. Yeah. Hey Trent, by the way, congrats, man. I don't I don't even think I texted you, did I? Um you and I, I don't have, have we don't have each other's number. Uh, is that why? I think I sent you congrats <laughs> online. Oh you did, yeah. You yeah, we have a you and I have a Twitter relationship. That's yeah, that's where, right. That's where our relationship yeah. lives. I, I appreciate it. Thank you. Hey, I know your phone number is only one text away all the time, Trent. I like it like that. Right. There's no, I mean, yeah, you can, you, whenever you want it, you can have it. I can have it. Thank you. I just get I, t- till game. Right. I appreciate the congratulations. And I want to say again to you, congratulations on your win. Thanks, it's buddy. You know, till gang is popping off right now. You better make some new merch. Yeah. The till gang is having a hell of a, I guess it's been a month. This has been a big month for the till gang. Yeah. Huge. Um, kids, what'd your phone look like yesterday? Dude, how about this shit? So I I had booked the flight with Wills up to go to New York, and I had three or four players going with me. And then when I won, I said, y'all just go, and I'll figure it out because you got to do so much stuff after the round. They were all standing around waiting to go to New York. So they took my plane to New York, and I drove three and a half hours home to Aiken. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, That's amazing. man. So, yeah, I didn't even look at it. I had like 800 and something texts when I got to the house. I started rolling through them this morning, getting them, getting them back to people. Eight hundred is—I wouldn't even have guessed. I didn't know you knew eight hundred people. Who has eight hundred people in their phone? Even? Well, you know how it is—the group threads, man. Yeah. So, like, 
you know, my boys here are all on a thread that I'm in and they're texting about every shot. So you click on that one and 60 of them go away. Yeah. <laughs> Then they come over drunk as hell and watch it on my TV last <laughs> night at 11 o'clock at night and tell me what they were saying while I was playing. I bet that's what you wanted to hear. I couldn't hear much at that point. <laughs> or is it weird watch? Is it is it weird watching it back? I didn't really watch a whole lot of it, but it's like I've been doing it so long now, it's not weird anymore. It, well, I remember the first time I ever won, I wanted to go home and watch and see like how my swing looked. And now I just don't really care. <laughs> <laughs> Unreal. It was it was weird compared to the other ones in that you were saying this kind of yesterday, I think, with Balionis, but it was it was never even really like you were in the tournament. And then no, all of a sudden dude. you won the fucking tournament. <laughs> it's the craziest <laughs> shit ever. And then well, two stories on that. I I'd given up on the win on fifteen when I didn't make Birdie, the par five. I'm like, yeah, all right, well, let's make a couple birdies and, you know, top five rolling into the playoffs. And I hooped that putt on 16. I looked up and I was one back. And I was like, fuck that. I'm about to win. <laughs> and I hit that seven iron on 18 in regulation. And I was like, that bitch is a winner right there. It's going to the, the grip. And for when it stayed up on that hill, I was like, there's no – I hit my putt this far, literally, and it went four feet by. <laughs> And uh, so all I had to do was just trickle back and I could have won it in regulation. And then in the playoffs, I'd already put all my shit up because Scotty's putt was like, like three and a half feet straight in. I'm thinking no chance he's missing this. I've already put gloves, balls, tees up. <laughs> you know, I told Dewey maybe one day, just quote, as he's walking in, I said, one day we'll have a four footer to win a golf tournament. Dewey never had that. Then he whiffs and I have four feet, 12 minutes later to win the golf tournament. <laughs> 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 actually a, a video when scott misses it you like collect yourself and you're in the background i was like is that kids i watched it like three times and then sure enough you're like putting your shit back on and off you go again. <laughs> yeah. i was ready to roll on to new york man so unreal good. that is unreal um was uh was the six you know the six player thing was it like weird was it did it feel surreal was it like I, what was that how different was that from anything else you done the weirdest thing I've ever done. Like just it watching, felt like it. watching six weird. tour players stripe tee balls and then all walk down the fairway together. And then the, the fans yelling at you from, you know, they, they have something on everybody at that point when there's six of us, right? They're yelling at every one of them and walking down. I mean, the, the scene was pretty electric, but it was almost like a hit and giggle. Like we were playing at home. All we needed was some beers hit and giggle and then nobody like knew where anybody's point like see Wu stepped directly in adam scott's line just because there's so many coins and shit out there nobody knew where anybody's <laughs> ball was and scotty's just like what in the hell is going on on the second playoff hole if you remember see yeah. chipped it like right yeah. up there by my ball yep he goes to market he steps directly in scotty's line <laughs> scotty's like what there's shit everywhere man i had to move my <laughs> coin Roger Sloan gets me to move my coin, and then he hits my coin after I move it. I think his ball was going in the hole to hit my coin. I'm pretty sure it was, too. They didn't mention it on the broadcast, but when they played it back in slow motion, it hits your coin and goes left. And I was yeah. like, I think that ball was, was going in. It was dead center, I think. Because, like, you can tell kind of from the side if it's going to go in or not. And I'm like, oh, shit, that's tracking. And then I just see it hop. And I was like, oh, my God, I hit my coin. <laughs> That was a funny story about him, too. So, like, he started 131 for the year in the FedEx. So, yesterday was a huge day to get into the playoffs. And that's, like, career changing for him. So, I'm, like, fist bumping him because he played great all day and kind of cheering him along, you know. And then he birdied 16 with me. And then he birdied 17 with me. I was like, all right, man, I'm done fucking fist bumping you. I'm, I got to beat your ass here. <laughs> but I think you're good on the 125, but I'm about sick of your shit now. <laughs> unreal what a wild dynamic the whole thing was just like you said it happened so fast and the fact that you guys were playing earlier like he was as a fan like people couldn't watch it at first so nobody knew how to watch it, it wasn't on like tv you had to stream it then you had to find the app and then all of a sudden you you finally find the app you tune in and they're like kids is tied with six other guys on the 18th hole and he's got like a 20 foot downhill putt to win the tournament you're like 
what the? F- how did this happen? I'm in fucking Arizona. I'm hung over his balls. I'm like, I just woke up. What are these guys? What has kids been doing all morning? 17, you hit it to what? Like an inch on 17? Yeah, a little Timmy tap in. <laughs> how about tap. that? Uh, yeah, how about hey, your, your chip the on funny the first? Part, oh, boy. When I got to 18T, did y'all notice that I was the last one there? Nobody ever told me it was time to go. Yeah, the a broadcast was like, I think we're waiting for Kevin Kisner. Yeah, I'm just chilling on the range, waiting on. Normally, a rules official comes and picks you up. Well, nobody ever came to get me, so I'm like, "Well, are we are we going?" And so then when we get there, I'm like, "Oh, sweet! I, at least I know I beat Russell back here." And they're like, oh, "Russell's not in." Ooh, I was like, "What? On. He three bought at 18? I had no idea because I wasn't watching. And oh, they're like, "Yeah." <laughs> it's like, "Holy <laughs> shit!" So it's only six of us now. All right, let's send it, boys. Let's go. <laughs> Well, thing sounds like a club championship or something. Right. Like a, a, you won the net club championship. Yeah. As long That's as they a, pay a million bucks, I'll play in every one of them. <laughs> <laughs> that chip for birdie on the uh, the first playoff hole, that had to look good 99.9% of the way. I couldn't see the bottom of the hole, but uh, when, it land, when it hopped, you know when it, you hit a perfect – Frankie, mm-hmm. you know when you hit a perfect ship, right? Yeah, right, right, exactly. <laughs> yeah. You can feel it right And it down hops, the hop. and you're yep. like, that's going in. Yeah, that's what it looked like in air. And then the crowd obviously went nuts. And it, I didn't see it, but it missed by a couple inches. I pushed it. <laughs> Pretty good. <laughs> what an asshole. And then um, – yeah. I'm sipping red wine on cloud nine right now. It's amazing to talk to. It's so humid, too. Look at my fucking glass. It's like fogging <laughs> up out here. Yeah, are you are you even playing in New York? What are, you're just like chilling, drinking wine in South Carolina? There's a tournament going on up here. Yeah, I'll get the, I'll get to it. I'm not in a rush. Does a win like that like does it take like sixteen years doing this? Yeah. Like like are you like less jacked up now to play in the like the northern? No, Texas? I'm more jacked up. Yeah, because the I'm game win just more. Like the, yeah, you just want to win more. Just keep it going. Keep the streak going. They're giving away fifteen million dollars in three weeks. It'd be nice to have that. Not giving it away, you got to earn it. Well, if you earn it, they give it to you. That's true. Real quick, folks, a big thanks to Owens Mixers. We're actually be doing a little meetup in uh, Jersey in what Hoboken? Are we doing it in Hoboken? I think we're doing it in Hoboken on Thursday during the um, Green Rock. Green Rock. We're going to be at Green Rock, which is is that Hoboken or Jersey City? Hoboken. Six o'clock, Green Rock. It's um, it's become a staple of of barstool um, employees down in Hoboken. I think Who one owns of the it? owners, Pat Light, I believe. He's a um, an ex MLB pitcher. He's a Carabas guy, but he, you know, you always see the videos of Za getting absolutely bundled, and he wakes up and says he's never going to do it again. Oh my days! He'll wake up and say, Oh my days! Um, <laughs> And, and Mush goes there, Tommy Smokes, Glenny Ball. So, I mean, I heard we're going to have quite the crew just because it's so close and we have a lot of people in Jersey City. So, um, Hoboken, 6 o'clock, Green Rock, Owens Mixers. 6 o'clock, Green Rock, Hoboken on uh, Thursday, Owens Mixers. They're, um, they're awesome. They've just revolutionized. They've changed the mixer game. They've worked with us to come up with the transfusion. they got a margarita mix out that people love now. they got a lot of really good flavors that they've whipped up. Pour it in with your favorite liquor of choice, and you just have an awesome cocktail. You go to Amazon, next day shipping. You can go to their website, owensmixers.com, see what the store locator tells you. Go pick that shit up. Put it in with your favorite liquor. Make yourself an awesome cocktail. So big thanks to Owens Mixers. They're just, uh, they just get it. So big thanks to Owens. Are you, uh, that, that you, mic is preposterous, by the way. I mean, what is that? It's a good word. It, it's an audio show, so I don't care what it looks like as long as it <laughs> sounds better. Hey, I had a question. I was thinking about this. All the times that I've done your podcast, we never did Zoom until COVID, did we? No. Like, we never did video. I always just called in, right? Yeah. 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 <clears throat> You'd usually call so from the like car That's like a positive of COVID, right? We all get to see each other now. Yeah, yeah. You would usually call yeah. like you're dropping your kids off at school or something, and you yeah, would just I, call us. Then and I drive. could start cussing after I dropped them off. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I remember like we had only had you on two or three times, and it always been at night when you're like this drinking a glass of wine. And we had you on one morning after you dropped off the kids at school, and everyone's like, "Who was that guy that you guys just interviewed?" <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's out. Don't don't invite him back in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's heart. That guy's heart rate was at like 19 while he's doing the show. And it's just, you had nothing going on. So 
So yeah, I think yeah, there's a little bit of positive. Technology picked up a little bit. Um, did you get any any correspondence from Captain Stricker yet? Yeah. He's like, I'm picking you for the Ryder Cup. We'll break it on the foreplay. <laughs> I thought that's what he might say. That's great. Yeah. He said, I saw Riggs' uh, drunken twi- Twitter <laughs> rant, and I decided to just go ahead and hold a spot for you just to just to get him off my back. Uh, bunch that's of people text, bunch of people texted me like, man, kids really bailed you out this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> you know, B Rob's my boy that did the uh, finger thing. He said, man. You really bailed out Riggs. He, he went out on a limb for your ass, and then you win. Dude, what are the odds of that? I tweet Friday night that I'm going to root for the European team if you're not on the Ryder Cup team. Wake up, look at my tweets. I'm like, all right, all right. I get J- Justin Thomas texting me being like, Riggs, what happened last night? I'm like, yeah, whatever. Well, then you win the tournament. So now I'm just firing back at everybody like, oh, of course Kevin Kizzer should be on the team. He's the most recent winner on the fucking PGA Tour. Uh, so you, I mean, that's a good friend. That's a good partner. You bailed me out. That's what I do. Just wait till September when we play. Do you want to make an official statement on the Four Play podcast about what you think should happen with the Ryder Cup team? I think I I need to play well the next two or three weeks for me personally to get a pick. But the problem with the entire process is it's two PC and they don't just let. Like, Strick's a really cool dude, and he could just run and do his own thing and have an awesome time, but they just try to run by this process, and they, like, ask all these smart people that I think are dumbasses to try to help them and figure out a way to be better, and they try to make it too big of a deal, in my opinion. Like, the best thing to do is to go get all your guys together a couple times a year and put a bunch of beers on a golf course or wherever, bowling alley, whatever and build camaraderie throughout the year instead of like, let's go play whistling straights and be sober and everybody worry about where's our ball going to go on this all. I'm like, dude, we're the best players in the world. Let everybody give them what they need and get the hell out of the way and let them all be good buddies and they'll win. But we don't really have that on the team right now. That is as good of a campaign speech as you can give. <laughs> yeah. I run through a wall. Seriously though. Yeah, you're right. Too, so. Honestly. Yeah, it is. It's true. And I think as fans, I mean, you're in a tough spot because obviously like you want to be on the team, but you're not going to be out there being like, they better put me on the team so you sound like an asshole. But from a fan's perspective, and a lot of the reasons that we, we've talked about this on this show many times, even before you won yesterday, of the fact that we got guys on the team that have gone to the newspaper against each other, that have literally been roasting each other publicly online and in interviews. And then you got the Europeans that are all rah, 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 and they don't have the big names. We're always like, our average world ranking is always half of theirs, and we lose every fucking time. So it's like, why don't we learn to build, like you said, the camaraderie, get guys in there. It doesn't have to be the whole team, but get guys in there that are big-time team guys, that are locker room-type guys, if you're going to compare it to other sports. You were literally voted the number one answer for guys when they were asked two years ago in 2019, like, who do you want to be paired with most on the PGA Tour? Kevin Kisner was the number one answer. 16-5 and one match play record. Four PGA Tour wins. Most recent one was fucking 10 hours ago. It's just, oh, and you're one of the best putters in the world. It's just crazy that people would even argue that that should be on the on the Ryder Cup team. It's crazy. Yeah, that's, you know what you just said? That's the biggest key is putting. And people don't understand, like, I'm not the best ball striker in the world, and nor do I ever try to be, but putting kills people. Like, if you can putt, it literally drives people insane if you can make putts and they don't. And that's what you win in match play. And I think that's what the team misses on on our side is, like, having elite putters to make the putts to just kill momentum. That's what you got to do in, in, in match play. So, that's my two cents. I think you got to drive the ball in the fairway and make putts in match play. If you're never out of the hole, like – I love playing. Anybody know anybody who does that? Anybody know anybody who do, who does those things? <laughs> On a much lesser extent, that's like the four play pot. It's like I yeah, it is. I can't. I mean, I usually hit it bad. Riggs just makes pots, and it's the most infuriating. Right? Thing in How the world. mad do you like, get? Oh, I got seven feet for birdie. I blow it four feet past, and then I'm looking at a putt that I usually miss to have the hole because now Riggs is either made a 28 footer or made like the six foot comeback or whatever, and that's it's. Right. It's infuriating and makes your game unravel because you're like, 
I'm hitting it better than this individual. I'm just better every which way. And then putting is the complete, like even playing field. It'd be like, I don't know. It's almost like a hot goalie in hockey where it just shuts their door down, but it's infuriating and makes the team unravel. And so, yeah. Go, kids, go. Get on that team, make putts, and make the other team lose their goddamn mind. That's the yeah, best part. When you make when you make a seven-footer to tie the hole in match play, you might as well just put one in the check column of the winning hole because they get, they're just like, what the fuck? How do I ever win a hole against this guy? Exactly. And, I mean, this hasn't even been, admittedly for you, like your best year out there. I think you're 12th in strokes game putting, so it's like you're still – Literally a top 15 putter in the world this year. It hasn't been like your best year. It's just like that's if you drain putts and match play, like all of it adds up to me. That's just so obvious. Even if you hadn't won this weekend, I was clearly on this crusade already. Um, so, yeah, we're not going to make you obviously, you know, fight for it yourself. You've you've handled it extremely well from a political standpoint. Um, can you talk about your little leg kick twirl on the playoff hole? That shit was tight, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that was sick. That was a moment. It wasn't you know what? Those are, those are the things you do and you don't even know you did it. But if you ever could put yourself in a situation where you're on a 45-degree downhill slope and you have an 8-iron in your hand to a back left pin and you tell your caddy you're going to hit a high draw right at it, and when you touch it, you know it's a high draw going right at it, and you know it's going to be tight, just who knows what you're going to do, right? God, what a feeling that must be. Dewey says when he, he – hand like, I didn't even know how far we had until after Adam hit because, you know, I hit the longest drive on that hole. I don't know if you all are aware. I was the first. I tweeted about that. Week. I tweeted yeah. about that. Too, Snuck though. right by it. Went right by yeah. that other ball. So, he goes, it's 168 adjusted flag. And there's no wind. And then I go, it's perfect eight iron. And then he goes, absolutely. It's a green light. I go, you fucking think I'm aiming right at it, but <laughs> That's fucking awesome. It gives me the chills just thinking about yeah. it. And that little, that little dance move, I will say, was incredible. Light on the feet, kids are just, whoo. Well, I, the leg kick comes from the downslope. People have no idea. Y'all don't do have any idea how steep the downslope is because I'm about to fall over on my front foot after I hit it. That's why I'm – but when it's high drawing right at it, the leg kick's just a little added bonus <laughs> just for all you fans out there. It's so, it's so cool to have a moment like that, right? Like you just know it took over social media. It's it's synonymous now with your win. That's you know that's that's all you can ask for is having a moment like that. The leg kick will will live forever. Yeah, for sure. Left leg kick for life. <laughs> I tell you another funny story about it is after I hit that chip on the first playoff hole, somehow like Dewey handed me my putter and I swung it back, like swinging it back down, and he's almost. Step, like he catches it on his foot and he almost before steps down he's about to break my putter he's like oh shit and he like almost falls down i'm like oh god did you break it and it, it was still intact and it, so i tapped in that like three inch putt right and i didn't think about it and then when i'm up there waiting on all those guys to putt i'm like if I go set this putter down and it is like four degrees open or some shit, what am I going to do? Holy shit, I wouldn't man. look at it. I was too nervous to look at it. Wow. I love Dewey so much. What an right, the only beauty that guy is. The only thing that win was missing was a Dewey fall. Him falling yeah, down exactly. during that would have been, yeah. been really something. If I had to pick his big ass up on that hill on 18, buddy, we probably never got up Imagine there. I'd have to kick. call the carts in. <laughs> Imagine the lake kick happening as Dewey's rolling down in the side of the frame. <laughs> like, no one realizes how, like, steep it is. He's rolling on the right. The lake kick's going. The draw's coming into the fucking pin. <laughs> so electric. What a crew you guys are. <laughs> what a hey, traveling did see, circus. Uh, did you see his Instagram post when he said, how'd I do? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah I love that. <laughs> Y'all know him so well that you know he's never like that. So it's so funny when he does shit like that. It's amazing. What a man. traveling circus you guys are. It's just, it's amazing the fact that this crew all gets it done. It's pretty shocking, really. Pretty shocking. Yeah. We do it. Uh, They're all up there waiting on me to show up. What happened in the beginning of the week? You you banged your driver against, uh, who was it, Jones? Yeah, that was insane. What happened? Never, never happened in my career. Well, the range is super small, so we're kind of tight in there. And uh, 
it had to be just a perfect storm because he finishes like that, right? So his club's out here past his head. And then he had to finish about the same time I started down and our heads hit. And I'm swinging a driver 115 miles an hour. I whiff the ball because it like throws me. And I'm like, holy shit, what just happened? And everybody's like, you hit his club. And I didn't get hurt. I don't know how I didn't get hurt. I thought for sure my back would be toast. My back was pretty sore on Saturday, like, but I just threw another head on there and off we went. Jesus. I've actually, I've been surprised sometimes that doesn't happen more often because those ranges are a shit show. There's like coaches walking around everywhere. Not necessarily you hit another player, but that people don't just get whacked because it's not just like you said, people aren't just kind of like lightly swinging clubs. You guys are swinging them 120 miles an hour. Yeah. You hit somebody like that, it's going to hurt. And volunteers are getting your bags or your ball. There's people everywhere. Range is a shit show. Actually, it's better now than it used to be because of COVID, but I guess we're going back to normal now. Right, you got guys like us walking on That's where we live. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I just sit there to get handshakes. I know. At the at the at Kiowa, every time you walk by, <laughs> you're like, you guys still standing in the same spot? <laughs> yeah, I couldn't get over that Trent was still wearing a hoodie. <laughs> You were wearing the hoodie. I was, or oh. I guess I was too. Yeah. The, was that you, so Frankie? It. I'm like, it's 90 degrees out. Yeah, well, awareness. It, had the, it had the big foreplay logo on, so it was working. Guys were looking at us being like, oh, those are the foreplay guys. But it is funny. We were there at like 7 a.m. Kids sees us. Then it's like 3.30, and we really didn't stay there all day. We like walked around, went to the media center, went out on the course, came back. We're in the same spot, and kids is like, you guys haven't moved an inch since I, I played an entire practice round. Like, you're just here to just look at people. It was actually like, so we were like, fuck, man, he's right. <laughs> we haven't done shit. <laughs> he's right. Somebody said How did that you we, like Charleston? Did you go out in Charleston? Didn't you go out in Charleston? We went out, went out one night. Yeah, yeah. we went to, uh, um, what was that place called? Uptown Social. Yeah. I loved it, man. It's a cool place, isn't it? I watched an Islander playoff game there. We had the place jumping. They were chanting, let's go Islanders in Charleston, South Carolina. It was nuts. <laughs> Legitimately, Cal, like, your boy Cal's been texting me all morning about the city, and he says he's in Canada for a week for a wedding. Yeah, he is. Called, it, called his buddy an idiot for getting married. <laughs> he, uh, yeah, man, he's a he, he's. I liked how you hopped on the Islanders bandwagon this year, texting me during the playoffs. That was that was a lot of fun. Yeah, man, I'm all, I'm all in. If I know somebody, I know the sport a little bit. You know, my roommate, my freshman year in college was from canada so he explained to me the game okay so i'm not like a not if you know the game it's a great game right but if yeah. you don't know shit about it True. it's the worst game ever to watch because it's chaos right yeah that. if you don't know if you don't know what's <laughs> going on and you don't understand what exactly they're trying to do you're just like fuck this i'll go watch something else. it's well, like, it's like me baseball. With cricket i have <laughs> right. no clue what they're doing and they're running around some games last for three days i don't understand how that's possible I want to right. learn how because it's electric. I mean, when they make catches and when they hit those bombs, I'd love to learn cricket, but I don't know anything about it. Exactly. When you when you travel to like New Zealand and Australia, that's all you watch. That's the only sport. When we were in Australia, on, that so. was all that was on the TVs. People exactly. went to the bar to watch Seriously. cricket yeah. as if it was the exactly. fucking Yankees. Dude, is it a cricket game like five days long? Sometimes, yes. yeah. Yes. They like pack it up at the end of the day. People could be at bat, I think, for multiple days, like yeah. in a row. <laughs> yeah. It's just a hard thing to understand if you don't know what it yeah. is. Yeah. It's crazy. Could anybody it's explain crazy. one rule of cricket other no. than it takes forever? In this no. Game? I know no. it's yeah, somewhat I know similar one, to baseball. I know you don't want to hit it in the air. Like right. they're trying Ground to balls, hit grounders. Right? Yeah. yeah, they want they want to hit grounders. <laughs> Oh, I uh, thought there was a home run in cricket. I thought you there could is, one. but I, I don't. I don't know. We, I went and go play with these. I uh, just fucked around with the bat and all, with these Australians <laughs> in Hawaii this year, like Cam Smith and all his boys. And they slow roll this pitch down the middle, and I just smoke it over the house. And they were like, "Yeah, it's not really what we try to do." And I was like, "Well, what the fuck do you mean? Y'all acted like I couldn't hit the ball with your stupid bat, and now I've ripped it over the house, and you tell me that's bad." <laughs> You've already bat flipped and you're rounding the bases. Yeah, like, like, that's it, baby. This, this game's easy. <laughs> Woo! <Okay. laughs> Baseball, And then baby. I watch them and they're like hitting these little soft grounders towards first or something. And I'm like, what the fuck is that? That's stupid. Shit. Oh, that's such an American move. That's to just amazing. fucking smoke the ball over all the houses. Like, <laughs> bat flip. Yeah. All right. What's, What's next, next game? Yeah. 
Yeah. Y'all got anything else? else we can try? You guys got badminton or anything? What else you got over here? <laughs> Let me know. Uh, dude wipes. Let's talk about dude wipes real quick. I'm holding uh, one of their shower wipes right here. Um, but really, it doesn't make any sense to use scratchy, rough toilet paper on your bums, gentlemen. It's just stupid. You got to got to combat that nasty area with something moist. It's as simple as that. You know, there's a lot of good inventions in the world. And as a people, We've really progressed the wiping of the anus sector of, you know, invent, event, invent, <clears throat> of Ooh. inventions. Holy smokes. Inventions. <laughs> no, did you not know the word or did you not know how to say it there? I uh, didn't know how to say it there. <laughs> okay. Um, but, you know, the fact of the matter is that we, someone sat around and was like, I'm just not getting everything out of here that I need to be getting out of here. we got to clean this up. You know, when we clean something off a, di- off a table or off a, off a dirty dish, maybe when you're cleaning the dishes after a, a, a nasty meal, you don't attack it with a dry towel. You get it underneath uh, the a weird sink. move. You, you, you go in there with a wet napkin, maybe. Um, the same thing applies for your bum. And I just think that dude wipes has figured it out. And, you know, if you don't have one of these things in your golf bag, just for those moments, um, I think you're really stupid. Yeah. You need to have an emergency pack in there. Also. I mean, it's a sensitive spot, so you need some comfortable stuff to put on a sensitive spot. You don't put sandpaper down there. You gotta get comfy, but it's you need, you sh- everybody should have an emergency kit in their golf bag because I would say as Riggs knows, they're probably the top guy on our podcast that, things can go south quickly and so if you need it and it's, you need to and, have it's it. and once it's too late it's too late you know what oh. i mean you'll never know oh. you'll never know that you needed it until it was too late once you're late you're a lifetime behind you, you can't be prepare. a minute late you yeah. have to prepare. you just can't be late it's uh something you can't be late on so you just you just have to have it you can get it at uh, dudewipes.com use the code 415 f o r e 15 and you get yourself 15% off. They've got uh, dude powder, dude shower body wipes. They got obviously the flushable wipes. They got an extra large pack. They got all kinds of good stuff. So go to dudewipes.com. Use the code 415 for 15% off. Um, Where are you, Riggs? I just got to Jersey City. Oh, shit. You're coming this week to the tournament? Yeah, I beat you to the tournament. Damn, I should have flown on up there. I could have got drunk with you tonight. We got plenty of nights for that. It's fine. I got to be sober after tonight. Yeah, so you'll be on the course tomorrow. You're going to start your practice rounds tomorrow. Uh, the pro am is fucking 18 holes, which is just outrageous. So I got to do that. That's tomorrow. That's Wednesday. Wednesday, okay. I'm gonna go fly and pick up Dewey as a congratulations. So I'm gonna land in Morganton, North Carolina, and scoop his big ass up and fly him to Teterboro tomorrow. That's, That's great. fantastic. Amazing. That is fantastic. Can you send me a video of that? Just yeah. Just you scooping Dewey on the runway. For sure. I told him. Be out. He sent me. He sent me the. Uh, oh man, he's a trip. He sent me the airport code today. He's so anal. I don't know if you know this about Dewey, but he's the most anal like has to have all his ducks in a row all the time. Like, he's probably got his hotel room booked from Maui today since I won yesterday. Um, so he's like, here's the airport code. I was like, Dewey, I got you, man. Be on the fucking tarmac at 1030. <laughs> he's been grinding right. recently. His, like, I always see him on Instagram. His his two kids are always they're in, like, competitive golf. Like yeah, crazy. they were him and his daughter were stuck in an airport for a, like a full day. Yeah, I was watching the updates. It's been a tough he just show. dropped her off at college. He left my round on Friday this week. Drove down and moved her into Belmont Abbey. She's going to play on the golf team there, and then came back caddy Saturday, Sunday. And his son's uh, about to be a sophomore. He's a stud. Yeah, they seem. Yeah, to be he's really good. good players. He always live Instagrams his rounds like Dewey does. Yeah. It's great. Yeah, he's are like. Legit stud, like D one golfer stud. Yeah, I remember we played the um the cradle with him at Pinehurst and he mm-hmm. was just throwing darts. That's right. We did do that. After y'all beat my ass. That's right. That's right. Fuck you, That's Lurch. Right. Don't smile. <laughs> That's a big smile. That's right. <laughs> Lurch and uh, Lurch and Dewey have similar social media presences. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Both really get it. Yeah. You guys got <laughs> Yeah. You guys got a stranglehold on it. You guys want to say it, you just don't know how to say it. That's so <laughs> that true. It. 
That's I think Dewey's point. a thousand times better than Lurch. Yeah. Like yeah. that Instagram photo yesterday was all time. Oh, yeah. Lurch could have never pulled that never. up. Never. Certainly not the caption either. I need a, I need a social media person. Um, Tony Austin, awesome run mine. Yeah, let me know. I was, uh, I was in the Wendy's drive through like 4.30 yesterday thinking, man, this would be great content. <laughs> yeah, I wins the Wyndham, and he's in Wendy's eating a bacon cheeseburger on the way home in his truck. Pop well, I just can't video. pull it off. Turn the phone Dude, on. You sh- yeah, you should have had. Uh, you should have had like the literally the uh, drive-through, you know, employee even take a picture and then you like send it to me and then I'll be like, oh look what a stoolie tweeted out or something. Right. Was really, <laughs> oh yeah. Like, we could do something like that. Like oh, stoolie sees Kevin Kisner with the trophy. That was like after Adeki won the Masters and he was just carrying the green jacket through like the Atlanta through airport. the Atlanta airport. Yes. Yeah. yeah. That's that right. was like uh, Giannis ate that 50 piece at McDonald's after they won the finals. Like stuff like yeah. that goes crazy. Yeah. See, More you're on the right track. The trophy got to get somebody to run it for you. More cow put the trophy. Yeah, I just get the, so uh, tired. Airplane. I just get tired. <laughs> right. You you've done your job, and now you now right. you got to do internet stuff. That's that's all right. Job. I got no time. Y'all just do internet stuff all the time. So maybe I'll just make the foreplay pod my new social media campaign. Our managers, y'all just four all have my passcodes. And whenever you just think it's time to, to Instagram, you just get on there and do it. Okay. What kind of percentages are we talking? Yeah, were we talking pit money? <laughs> well, you can't do everything for money. You got to put like actual personal stuff on there. That's fine. We could do that. Oh, um, yeah. We can get, we need hashtag engagement. Yeah. Uh, the only issue with that is that we'll forget to log out and we'll definitely just tweet the wrong shit from your account or start- from, uh, you know. I'll start live tweeting the Bachelorette from Kevin Kisner's Twitter <laughs> <That's right>. account. <laughs> that, that would get chicks all over me, dude. <laughs> it's like uh, one time, the one time I was logged into Dave Portnoy's Twitter by accident. We were, I did a pizza review because I would post every just day. Just started downpouring. Account. Hold on. All right, there you go. And uh, I was watching a day day game Islanders game, and Scott, I remember Scotty Mayfield scored a goal. And I was still logged into Dave's account with millions of followers. And all it was like a one o'clock on a Wednesday. And I wrote in all caps, Scotty fucking Mayfield, all caps. And it went from Dave Portnoy's Twitter account. I remember feeling the heat of a thousand suns oh, inside my stomach being like, what did I just do? Instantly deleted it and ran into his office. I'm like, I just tweeted about a random Islander to like four million people on your account. Like, I hope that like no one like, I uh, hope you're not mad. And he's like, I don't give a fuck. He's like, you didn't give a shit. <laughs> these, so these are the people you're. Yeah. Saying you want to give your Twitter account to. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> Maybe I'm out. Uh, Not a great audition. Um, what'd you get at Wendy's, by the way? What's your order? I got a baconator or something like that. Of course. Oh yeah. Are you acting like you don't know what a baconator is? You don't need to downplay it, kid. Mean that feels like, like a, that. Don't be that feels a, like a new thing, though. No. Oh, Kevin. Did you get a frosty, dude? Dude, when I was. Eating Wendy's more often, I was getting like junior bacon cheeseburgers and nuggets because they were on the dollar menu. Did you get a frosty? Now I rolled up and I'm like, Baconator, that sounds delicious. They are really good. Yeah. Frank, you got a question? Did you you get a frosty? No. Fuck. Dude, I was trying to eat and do 98 miles an hour in my truck on the way home (laughs) so I could get to the party. Uh, And it was like tropical storming, as it still is here. And then I walked in, my beautiful wife had pepperoni Magnifico pizza waiting on me. Ooh. So I went Wendy's pizza, 42 beers and 12 bourbon shots, and then blacked out in my bed. You deserve it, man. You do. A great night. That's a winner's yeah. night, man. Yeah. And I think everybody left by like midnight, which is just outrageous. I don't know that. It could have been 4 a.m. I have no idea. But I feel <laughs> like I got a lot of sleep. We um, we got a lot of tweets yesterday about Wad Wednesday, which has been a topic of conversation on this show, thanks to you, because you told us all about it. It's going to be a nice Wednesday, my friend. Yeah. Um, the last time I won, I screenshotted my checking account to Riggs on Wad Wednesday because it was like $1.9 million. And that's pretty cool to see that in your checking account, right? <laughs> And then he's like, I'm posting. I'm like, ah, I don't think you should. I think we're going to look like a dick. So then I just told him we couldn't do it. Yeah. <laughs> didn't I like talk? Didn't I say no or some point? I yeah, feel like we I, didn't post. Yeah, because I was like, um, so how does this work? Like, what's it look like? They just, you just log into your like bank app and your checking account just has fucking 
like two million more dollars in it and you're like yep you want to see and then that, <laughs> that was it <laughs> <laughs> then we went back and forth on whether you should yeah. post it for an hour i was like i don't think it's probably some dude will steal my money or some shit the way this world works that was when like the foreplay public management company kind of overruled you and was like yeah maybe we won't post it <laughs> that's all right damn bro million dollars how's my boy dave bro. doing does he need me to come give him some lessons to beat brooks's ass or what that'd be awesome what are your I legitimate know, I'm, I'm, what, are, what are your legitimate thoughts on this what are your thoughts on the match fortnoy has no chance man Brooks is going to shoot like 85. Ooh, that's a yeah, low, that's the problem. Is like the, I'm pretty number. confident in Dave's ability to get Brooks to shoot a higher number than ever, the public thinks. All right, like, I understand that, but I'm, I'm, I'm sure more worried about Dave's number. Like that's Dave, right, Dave's yeah. not very good. He just needs to practice. We're going to get some practice in this week. Uh, you're in the New York area. Maybe we can work something that's, out. That's what I'm saying. I'll give him some lessons. I'm all on Team Portnoy to beat Brooks' Dude, ass. You need to right. do that because otherwise he's going to get steamrolled, I think. I agree, Briggs. I think he's in a bad place. I, the mental game aspect that he's going with, I, I completely understand. But if he can't break 95, which I don't think he can, I'm not. The last time I saw him play was when he's hitting 48 golf balls at a, in 30 seconds. <laughs> Um, Me too. I so, think that's the last time he played. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's not like he's out there grinding on the range. So he needs to get out there and practice a little bit because Brooks is going to be able to play. 85 not like seems he's, so dude, good. 85? You don't think he's going to find himself in like – Well, they're going to play like a muni track, right? I don't know where they're playing. No. They're Has not it playing been announced like, where they're okay. playing? It hasn't been announced where they're okay. playing, but it's not a muni track. Is it going to be difficult, like high rough and – bunkers yeah i mean it's gonna be it's gonna be pretty fucking legit for being honest like you'll be pretty familiar with the golf course right all right we'll see really like brooks ain't gonna hit a lot of fairways you'll be really familiar stuff. with the golf course like super familiar with it but um <laughs> yeah we'll see <laughs> like i just want to tell you so bad you're so yeah. familiar kevin <laughs> kevin you are gonna be so familiar with this golf course <laughs> <laughs> but uh but dude i'm telling you we just got to get dave to a number that'll surprise brooks and i think he'll crumble right if we can just get it are they playing match play or stroke it'll play? be match play which i think benefits dave big time all right well if he wants any lessons this week that was all, all right. i was off we'll i'll talk to him tomorrow we'll see like where he's at when he's going to be in the city he's going back you know he goes to the hamptons he comes back so i don't know where he's going to want to practice but we'll see if we can get you involved that would be unreal <laughs> Yeah, I play. I've already got my tee times for the week, so I play late early. So, I'll be Friday or Friday afternoon will be electric. All right, man. Oh, I think that could be something. Big time Friday offer. afternoon. Yeah, that's huge, an awesome offer. Huge offer. <laughs> <laughs> huge offer. Middle of the playoffs. <laughs> um, is there um, is there anything else we didn't get to? I'm trying to think. No. Well, my wife ain't come out here yet, so I'm really in no rush. No. Um, I'm waiting on her to, like, tap on the window here. You see, I strategically place myself outside. Like, when she comes tapping, I'm like, all right, boys, I enjoyed it. <laughs> You're smart. You're a smart man there, Kevin Kisner. <laughs> this ain't my first rodeo. No, it ain't. No, it is not. Um, How about you, our um, Oakmont trip that you're going to lose $1,000 to me at? Have y'all heard about go. this for play boys? I don't think so. No, no. Riggs has bet me a G that he's going to break 80 at Oakmont the day before the barstool classic. I'm taking him to Oakmont. You don't think that that's possible? Happen. What, what? tees you playing? The back tees. The only tees there are in golf. Back tees is a little preposterous. I can't. I back tees, <laughs> you can't break a hundred. <laughs> I don't know. I've been playing pretty well. Break a hundred. I know. I know. I'll but tell like, you what. 80s I'll tell out you of the what. Question. Pretty, wherever, pretty impressive, though. wherever my amateurs that I'm bringing with me play, you can play from. So if they play, Tom's a member, so he'll play wherever the fuck he wants. Oh, perfect. And I got to get Tom on my team. Tom on yeah. my side with this. Well, he, yeah. you have a bet with him too, so I don't know if you remember that. Well, then the other one. I know I had a couple <laughs> bets. A couple guys. <laughs> 
Uh, so we got a big trip. We're playing Oakmont the day before the Barstool Classic in Pittsburgh, and then we're playing the Barstool Classic together. Um, I would say now, since it's looking, you're looking much better than you were for East Lake. That I, this whole uh, potential of me coming down and flying up from Aiken to Pittsburgh together is uh, a little more appealing to me now. <laughs> It wasn't appealing when I was 70th in the FedEx, but now that I'm 30, it's okay. I couldn't plan when you're uh, maybe not even going to make it to Baltimore, but now all of a sudden <laughs> you're looking good for East Lake. I'm it. <laughs> it's a lot different. <laughs> oh, man. I love the way you act. Um, but we do. We got a big trip. We got a huge round in Oakmont. We're taking a couple of the guys out. Um, that's probably the hardest course I've ever been to. Played it once with Lurch. It's it's. It looked awesome. You watch it in the amateur? I mean, any of the highlights or anything afterwards? I didn't get to watch any of it, but I heard they got a bunch of rain and kind of ruined the the firmness of it. But uh, I'm sure it's still sh- – I, you know what's crazy is they cut down all those trees, and now all those guys – I saw a tweet about all the alternate lines guys were taking. The game is changing rapidly, but people don't give a shit what you think about how they play it. They just want to shoot low. That's correct. Guys were literally hitting it on like six different holes. They were hitting it to the other fairways. Don't care. Nobody cares anymore. It was wild. Oh. It's all about how low you can shoot. Macanudos, baby. Macanudos have changed everything. I got to tell you. Uh, uh, cigar guy. Didn't used to be a cigar guy. I'd had a few maybe on a golf course here and there. But now we've uh, partnered with Macanudo. They got the uh, Inspirato Orange, the Inspirato White. Inspirato Orange has a little bit more, I guess, flavor. The Inspirato White's a little smoother. Um, but, boy, I'm enjoying these. we got the little cigar case that you put in your golf bag. It just makes the whole experience feel more uh, memorable. It's more enjoyable. It's uh, It almost, like, cements the whole day as a, as a memory for you. Uh, Macanudo's changed my whole my whole outlook on, on life, to be honest with you, gentlemen. Yeah, and it just – I brought – a big pack, like a 20 pack to a wedding. I just went to, and you know, that post hotel bar after party type deal where you got a little area outside, um, being able to bring Macanudos and everyone's like, Oh boy, this is like top of the line shit. Like you're not just stopping by your local, you know, tobacco shop and figuring out how to get the cheapest cigar you can find. Like this is like the real deal stuff. Macanudos has done the the job. Best selling handmade cigar in the United States of America. Is that is that what the tagline that. is? That's a that's a fact. Best Factual. selling handmade cigar in the United States of America. Yeah, I mean that's what I mean, and 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 just the packaging and the way that they look, the way that they taste, the way that they smoke, um, really good. You throw those in your golf bag and you are living, man. You're just a cool guy. Imagine like not having those in our bag now. Like I, it's just it's as it's as important in my golf bag as balls and a glove and tees. You know what I mean? When I check my bag in the morning before around, I need to have at least five to six cigars in there. <laughs> you want to have one for the whole group. And so, yeah, for my dad's 70, I don't know if I shared this, but we had, I think we had, I, we got a hundred Macanino cigars and I had three a day for three days straight. Ew, fuck, that's, that's <laughs> it was, it was amazing. It was honestly like, you wake up, have breakfast, light a cigar up, play, you know, nine holes. You might have one there and then one in the evening. It was absolutely phenomenal. And everybody you having cigars for breakfast, Lurch? Pretty much. Right after breakfast, I would have one on the front, then one on the back, and then wow. one in the evening. And we had 100 for 16 guys. We went through 93 cigars. Wow. It's <laughs> a lot. Sounds like a good time. Didn't suck down uh, was- seven after the 93? Say again. Couldn't suck down those last seven. No, at a certain point, you know, three a day, four is four is borderline insane, but three yeah. was three was strong. I like that three's like fine, but fours. Look, look. Everybody's got different point justifications. Is, exactly. Point is, a Macadudo makes your experience better. Lurch was sucking them down like they're fucking, uh, you know, Bud Lights or something during his his buddy's golf trip because you know he just liked them that much. They made the trip that much better. So do yourself a favor. Go to Macadudo dot com slash barstool. Uh, you can enter to win a limited edition branded golf set and a humidor for your Macanudo Inspirato smokes. You got to be 21 plus for entry. Uh, but do yourself a favor, go to Macanudo.com slash barstool and just enjoy Macanudos whenever you're out there uh, doing anything really, but especially playing golf. 
kids, we do this um, segment. We've only done it once. We call it the cut. All right, is that what it's called? We do this segment. We've only yeah. done it once. It's a that recurring segment. Lead. We've done once. We've done it once. <laughs> this will Actually, be the have, second time. This is we, the second time. We're building a little momentum. We did. Um, oh yeah, let's just do the cut right now. I was going to talk about the cut, but let's just do a cut. And what we'll, basically, we cut something from golf forever. And I'd love to hear what your number one thing you'd love to just so, cut from golf. I mean, Riggs can we'll maybe give you, explain this better. Well, no, we'll just give you an example. That's perfect. We'll just give you examples. Last time I said out of bounds. I think the whole world should just be in bounds on any golf course. You should always have a shot. You should always be able to play it. I don't care if you're over in the farmer's yard and you want to risk getting shot for trespassing. If you want to play your ball over there, there's no OB doesn't exist anymore. I said eliminate OB. Trent, I think, said bunkers. Definitely. He's just getting rid of bunkers forever. He doesn't understand it. The whole golf course is grass, 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 short grass, long grass, and then there's fucking sand for no reason, so he wanted to get rid of sand. What would you cut from the game of I had, golf forever? I had um, hitting out of divots. I actually Damn, that was, was going to be mine, fucker. Oh, see, I was going to say, I think globally mine was, was accepted as the best. Yeah. Cause it's I, I like the out of bounds. Same thing dude. Too. That happened to me the other day at the Barstool Classic in Minnesota. Hit a drive, wasn't that bad of a drive. It clipped a tree, but like the trees were right on the fucking fairway. Goes into someone's yard, white stake. I mean, come on now. I, I, the ball was right there, perfect swing, perfect swing. Yeah. I had on it. I I, I I was looking at the green better than the guys in the fairway. Yeah, I get it. Out of bounds sucks. What? Whoever came up with out of bounds? Like, hey, we're gonna put this arbitrary white stake over here, and just because your ball crossed it, you can't play anymore. Don't have a house there, right? Like, well, no. When you build the house there, you assume the risk. Right. Yep. <laughs> like, I want to live on a golf course. Well, the problem is people might hit seven irons out of your freaking yard. You live on a golf course where people right. play golf all the time. Remember, JT posted like a month ago. Uh, lost that tournament by like a shot and his ball was an inch out of bounds like they brought the measuring tape out and measured because it was so close between the two poles How's it? it's just arbitrary like you said they if if some asshole had just planted that pole into the ground an inch like to the left he would have won the golf tournament that's crazy town <laughs> i agree and who gets to come up with where the posts go <laughs> exactly right Hey, I think this is the property line right here, but I don't really have the pins <laughs> to go and find it with my metal detector. So we'll just stick this white post here and fuck this guy. What's your Did you cut? imagine if the PGA tour was wrong for that JT post one too? Just like screwed up the property lines or whatever for out of bounds. It'd be a mess. Yeah. That's ridiculous. Yeah. What's your cut? Um, uh, my cut would be. You don't get any like of this free free warning if you take more than forty seconds to play a shot. <clears throat> you just get slashed or something, or you just get fined, or a penalty shot. Because like, I love Brandon Grace, but he literally took a minute and a half to hit that twelve footer on eighteen in the playoff. I'm like Jesus Christ, man! Are you ever gonna hit the fucking putt? How much can you actually learn here? Like, he stood over it. His caddy stood over it. His caddy put the fucking pin down. I'm like, it's eight inches out on the right, bro. Hit it. I so, you're it. just saying a rules official just come over and pick up his ball mark at 40 seconds in? Yeah, I'm like, you're done, bud. He took 40 <laughs> seconds, you're out. Just that would have been awesome, by the way. Thank, yeah, thanks for just coming. Took his I appreciate you trying to win this tournament, but you took too long here. <laughs> and the guy just... <laughs> just gave him this sign. Just nope, you're out. It's over. <laughs> I asked Dewey. I'm like, do I play that fast? Because like in the playoff, I'm just standing there twirling my club the whole fucking time. Like, can, can I ever hit? And then I was like, do I play that fast? Hold uh, on. Oh, well, you were saying that about Adam Scott, Adam right? Like he off. he had to wait a preposterous amount of time. Adam Scott, you were like, maybe there's a chance on your post presser about like. He had to wait an outrageous amount of time to hit that putt. So you were thinking there was a chance that he might miss. Yeah, my man Dewey said that. I'd already put my shit up. And Dewey's like, you know, this is the longest he's ever had to wait to, to win a golf tournament. I can promise you that. There's balls everywhere. Like, we hit the worst shots ever in that first playoff hole. There's balls everywhere. And then everybody made fucking par. I don't know how in the world everybody made par. But when we went walking back down, I was like, did everybody make par there? It was great, too, because, like, it took extra long because a couple people kept their turn after they hit, like, chip shots or bunker shots, where it was like right. they hit a bunker. They'd be like, they're up. They would hit it all the way across the green, basically, like 15 feet. And then, it. 
like it. raking the bunker and then fucking everybody's waiting. They go over there, mark it, and Adam Scott was just sitting there. And yeah, when he missed that, that was tough. I felt bad for him a little bit, but all of a sudden it was like, oh, we got a little bit of we got a little bit of life. You for shouldn't you, ever um, feel bad for anyone that has their own playing rigs. He's fine. <laughs> That's fair. That's I didn't feel bad. I, just, I was just yeah. trying to fill words there. I didn't. I couldn't have cared less what he missed. <laughs> I love um, Scotty. One of my favorite dudes out there. He seems like I, nice I guy. like I assumed. I thought he was already one. Yeah. Um, were you uh, any anything special you said to yourself before you hit that putt, or is it just routine? Do that. You. I couldn't miss that putt. I mean, not to be cocky, but it's four feet right edge downhill. Just get it going. It's the dream putt down grain. Uh, so the whole time I just basically was like, if all these fuckers miss, this bitch is mine. <laughs> and they missed. And one of them finally, you blocked, you finally blocked him with your ball mark. Missed. Huh? Yeah, he played so a little one defense. Of them you- yeah, you blocked their putt with your fucking ball mark. No, dude. He asked me to move my mark and then hit it. So he fucked himself. Uh, he's so good. He's all right. He's probably so excited that he finished T second and is in Northern Trust. He's good. That's true. That's true. Um, my uh, By the way, just to finish that segment, my cut it would be um, cart path only days. I just think you shouldn't that, even open your golf course. I just think like they only. shouldn't give you that. And it, it's such a fucking nightmare when it's cart path only. I'd rather have just walked. If you give me the option to take carts, then we get there. We have our stuff all in the cart. We're ready to go. The starter at the right before you tee off is like, by the way, boys, we're playing cart path only. It's like, I mean, it's so much more stress on your body on your mind when it's cart path only it's crazy i mean you gotta go get the fucking clubs you don't know where to leave the cart who's gonna grab the cart especially if you're with a bunch of amateurs that like me and my buddies have no idea where we're hitting the golf ball you're all over the place oh my god it's honestly like you're angry that you have the cart you're so mad i won't play yeah get rid of it (laughs) seriously get rid of it dude we they got an inch of rain in Scottsdale on Friday, and we had a group of like twenty guys that played out at Greyhawk. And we got on the first hole. We were playing literally with like the head pro, Travis, awesome guy, and they're like, um, "Yeah, it's cart path only." And I was like, "Ah, you know that's fun." You know, it was literally cart path only. on the fifth hole. I literally just screamed out loud. I was like, "This sucks! Like this isn't <laughs> fun. This whole day fucking sucks." Like, I like, just want to go it's, in. <laughs> it's humid i got like nine clubs in my hand i'm running i don't know my yardage I, this is just miserable like what are we doing here my god my my partner who's joe griner who's max homeless caddy amazing guy he like the cart guy doesn't know if he should stay and like are you gonna run like from across the fairway back to the cart and yeah. then up to the green are you just gonna go up to the green so he doesn't know what to do it's five hours of this shit it was like you're totally right. That's the best answer in the history of this segment. In the long, I agree. distinguished I agree. history of this segment. <laughs> I agree. Segment over. You shouldn't right. even open your golf course if it's cart path only. I agree. Just say, sorry, we can't play today. Because maybe, like, off the rip, you're like, ah, fuck, I really want to play today. I'll do anything just to get out there. Like, you're ready to play golf. You want to go out there. But then you got to remember, like, three or four holes in, you're going to wish that you never step foot on that golf course. But do you know how stupid the whole idea is? Because, like, how much can that little-ass golf cart fuck up? <laughs> I know. Like, our course here at Palmetto, it's like they have these stupid-ass posts at 50 yards. And it's like the COVID, you got to wear a mask at 5 o'clock today or whatever. Like, okay, COVID wasn't around at 4.59. The fucking 50 <laughs> yards away from the green. What's the difference between 50 yards from the green and one yard from the green? Who gives a fuck where you drive? So true. Just drive up to the green. I don't care where you drive. Just don't drive on the green. I don't care. Stay out of the bunker, stay off the green. Drive wherever the fuck you want. Because if you had to come up with your own golf course from beginning to end, you it was the Kevin Kisner Golf Resort. How would you how would you do it? Starting with the course, like what kind of course would you put there? Like uh, the style of course, just or the style, style of nimble? course, like the rules, the the like the feel. I'm not a big rule guy, man. I don't like rules, but I don't like dicks either. Mm-hmm. So that's tough. So basically, my number one rule was would be if you're a dick, you're out. Hmm. Treat treat me or my staff like like shit. You're out. That's all right. basically all you write, need to know. I'm gonna write I these think, down. Rule one: I think the, don't be a dick. 
I mean, that's pretty much a universal way to get who you want in the place, right? Yep. If you're a dick, you're out. Yep. Kisner Golf Club. There's a place in Jersey called Due Process, and I played there once or twice. And their only rule, I believe, is fuck in or fuck off. So it's either just have as much fun as you want. If you're going to be a dick about it, you're going to be screaming on your phone. Just never come back. And I right. think it's one of the best rules you can have. All right, Kiz. So, rule two, carts anywhere but bunkers and on the green. Yeah, you can park it on the fringe. Okay. It doesn't matter where you park. Right. <laughs> they literally <laughs> drive tractors on the fucking green to mow them. That and drives me crazy. you're at me about my golf cart. That drives me crazy, and and I understand that mm-hmm. when, when you have a bunch of people at a public golf course, I get it when they put those um, regulator things on where you can't go into the high grass because they don't want everyone going to the high grass. But when I just watch, like, the super drive wherever he wants, like, in the biggest tractor fucking cart, and he's got these dogs running around taking shits all over the golf course, like – I have to back. You know when you get stuck on one of those carts and you got to back up it's the worst shit. Worst shit. Oh, that, man. Whoever invented that should be shot. <laughs> it's insane. It's like, that. if you don't trust us enough to be civilized human beings on this golf course, you shouldn't have carts in the first place. Like, if if you don't trust me to drive this thing where I need to drive it, then why are you giving it to me at all? You know what I mean? It's crazy that I have to have these bumpers on here. And then you have to go in reverse in one mile an hour oh, to get God. back to the back. Nightmare. <laughs> and then – Everybody too is an idiot when it comes to going in reverse. So now you're just like you're just like digging it in circles in the area you're not supposed to be going one mile an hour. It's like, dude, if you would have just let me go forward at twenty miles an hour, we would have been out of this mess ten minutes ago. Ugh. It's so true. The cart rules in golf are so bad. What else are we what else are we putting in the in the Kisner Golf Resort? Um I keep calling it a resort because I know you're going to have, like, a bar there. You're going to have – Well, you know... there's going to be a lot of comfort stations. Have y'all ever played, like, Discovery Properties? Oh, yeah. I got Troubadour. Yeah, you... on. Troubadour. Yeah, Troubadour, those places. that You know, how we're going to have those, but we're going to do them every three holes. Okay. Because who wants to wait on a cart, cart person to come bring me a beer when Com- I can just get a beer right here? Comfort station every three holes. I love it. And you know how PC the world's gotten is I just said cart person because I was. I could not that. believe that yeah. you just said wow. that. That was shocking. <laughs> and cr- very progressive of like, you, Kevin. Yeah. Am I going to get canceled if I say cart girl? Like, how <laughs> fucked up is that? Dude, they so tried to. Uh, um, it so out of trouble for saying. Almost- it was I said, almost weather girl worse the way time. you did it. You know what I mean? Like it was so yeah. obvious when you corrected yourself that you you drew so much more attention <laughs> to it being possibly wrong that you never even should have done that. You're like cart p- person. I don't know what I'm saying. I mean, yeah, I, I think it would have. Oh, sorry, been. dude. You no, nope, you're canceled. Sorry. That's it. Y'all remember the good old days when we just got to sit on here and shoot the shit and not worry about anything? Man, <laughs> now we're all tiptoeing around all gun. over the place. Yeah, it's like, what the fuck has the world become? Um, comfort station every three holes. Carts anywhere you want except for the greens, obviously. Um, you what, got style, no, what, what style yeah, what style of course would you like? Would you uh, hire, you know, to ar- architect? What kind of architect or what would you try to do in terms of the style? You more like Donald Ross or is it more like Reese John? Like, what are you, what are you looking at? I do all one cut. Uh I would probably use Gil Hance, but I'd probably be super involved in it. So I'd want like rolling terrain, fast Australian type golf, like Melbourne, where the, when did the presidents go at Melbourne? Yeah. So I think that's like the sickest shit ever when the same cut goes into the bunkers. I think that's, that's so awesome. badass. Yeah. And then I would do, uh, but you got to have green complexes that you can use the speed of the greens to be the defense. So I love, I love like contours being the defense, not really rough. I think rough's stupid. Like, <laughs> hey, you hit your ball one foot left of where you're looking, or like left of me hitting a six iron on the green. Now I got to lay up. That's fucking stupid. Like, just let me hit my ball up there near the green and then figure it out. I like all the defense to be around the greens. Um, isn't that how Austin plays usually? Yeah, very much. They have rough, but you don't really hit it in it. It's not like it's super narrow. Like I don't mind I don't mind rough like last week where you don't know if your nine iron is gonna go two hundred yards or a hundred yards. I think that's pretty right. cool. But the auto chip out shit, like it's just so boring. Nobody wants to play it. 
So, of course, like uh, St. Andrews, the Open next year, something that really gets you jacked up. I love it. Yeah. It's probably my favorite one. It's really easy course with no wind. That's what's crazy. And then all of a sudden, wind blows 30 and you can't finish. All right. <laughs> well, keep those. You literally hit lob wedge and drive greens the whole front nine. And then you're just like, all right, boys, here you go. You hit it over this fucking hotel or you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, Barstool um, Sportsbook users, if you check the wind and it's going to be something favorable, Kevin Kisner should be your guy. I mean, it's his favorite golf course. No, it's not my favorite one ever, of your but favorites. it's my favorite one of those rotations. This Labor Day weekend, the U.S. Department of Transportation's National Highway Traffic Safety Administration is working together with the law enforcement community to decrease impaired driving. NHTSA and local law enforcement are working tirelessly to spread the word about the dangers of drunk driving and to remind all drivers, if you plan to drink alcohol, plan ahead for a sober driver. Just this past weekend, we spoke about it on this very show, had a few drinks, played a little golf with Pat Perez, had some wine, got a nice dinner with him, his wife, Ashley Piper, their daughter. Uh, she wasn't drinking. I was and um, left my car up there. Took an Uber home, fired off a couple tweets about Kevin Kisner. Point being, when you're in this type of uh, scenario, there's no reason ever under any circumstances to drink while impaired. Make sure that if you're going to drink, you plan ahead for a sober driver. Drive sober or get pulled over. That's what they're focusing on this weekend, as they should be. During the 2019 Labor Day holiday period, 6 p.m. August 30th to 5.59 a.m. on September 3rd, 38% of fatalities in traffic crashes involved a drunk driver. That's an insane stat, by the wow. way. Wow. I didn't even know that stat until I just read it on the, on the copy. 38% of fatalities. So, folks, it's just not worth it. If fatal crashes during the month of August over the five-year period of 2015 to 2019, 8% of the drunk drivers involved with a BAC of .08 or higher had one or more previous convictions for drunk driving. That is crazy. Among drivers between the ages of 18 and 34 who were killed in crashes over the Labor Day holiday period of 2019, 46% of those drivers were drunk with BACs of .08 or higher. For more information about the Drive Sober or Get Pulled Over campaign, visit www.trafficsafetymarketing.gov. And then there's a, I mean, I'm going to read this whole thing. This looks. This is a very. This is one, maybe one of the longest links in the history of the world. <laughs> you have to read this whole link. Okay, I'm gonna do it just so we can put it in if we need to. But there has to be a better way for us to get this message across. It is, and I'm gonna hit you with it right here, folks. This get is, ready to type to do, here, fellas. We're trying to do our best to, you know, do a public service about how important this is. So because we're committed to the safety of people out there driving. I'm going to read this whole fucking link right now. <laughs> www.trafficsafetymarketing.gov slash get dash materials slash drunk dash driving slash national dash mobilization slash no, no. peak <laughs> dash. It can't be another slash. Peak dash enforcement dash kit. Boom. Easy. No, dude. Absolutely not. Listen, do not drink and drive. It's as simple as that. That is Don't one of the it. more hilarious ad read um, public service links I've ever heard in my entire life. Um, listen, it's as simple as just not doing it. Do you want to just live and not do fucking stupid things? Don't be an idiot. Don't be an idiot. Do the right thing. Lock the, throw the keys away. Give them to a, you know, go get a driver. Do what you need to do. Too many bad stories, especially recently, man. Long Island, the Long Island Expressway, all these parkways on Long Island. You hear horror stories. Young kids, it's nuts. It's terrible. I know we're laughing about the preposterously long length of that link oh, that boy, someone would read out loud on a podcast, but don't drink and drive. It's just not worth it under any circumstances. Uh -huh. Find a sober driver, take an Uber, have a friend pick you up, have your parents pick you up, do anything else other than drive drunk this weekend. Any weekend.
What's your favorite golf course ever? Sedgefield Country Club right now. <laughs> Is he gulps so it obvious. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, what'd you think of um Royal St. George's? Yeah, I thought it was pretty good. The whole like protocol and COVID <laughs> stuff was a little bit over the top over there, but it's all good. That was the highest I've ever heard your voice. It felt I like a lie. It was pretty good. It was I pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Pretty good. Love, it. Love that course. I really, that course was great. I'll go, go next year and play again. Got a lot of shit on the internet. Yeah. It did? It wasn't received well? I didn't think it showed great on TV. Like, it just didn't look. It didn't look like a cool, like, classic Lynx course. I mean, I, I heard the town's cool, people, whatever, great, but I heard uh, I, it felt like it felt like every hole you saw was, like, 500 yards on either side of it separated from the next hole, and there was all this weird, like, space, and it just looked, for Lynx golf, I don't know, it looked really different and kind of weird compared to a lot of the other courses. Well, it's in England compared to Scotland. A little so different. I think I give. I think I give. I think. I think we think it's in the UK. Same shit. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. It's like the chick. The chick on my flight home brought me a tray of food, and I go, "No fucking chance." I'm so tired of eating y'all's food. <laughs> I will just starve. She's like, "You don't want anything?" I'm like, "No, get that fucking awful beef and beans away from me, or whatever the fuck that is." <laughs> um, they do. Anyway, the golf course. Eh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I don't know. I shot like 80 on the third day and I was pretty over it. Yeah. Probably from watching Phil shoot a million the first two. <laughs> I thought it was pretty good. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> well, when you finish 73rd, you're not like that excited about it. No. I like Sedgefield Country Club. <clears throat> yeah, I bet you do. You want to go play it sometime? Just let me know. I can get you on. I'll play it, but it looks pretty sick. I want to try to hit that shot on the downslope where we almost lost Dewey and where you did the leg kick on uh, 18. How much are you going to carry me at the Classic? Because I'm going to be in awful shape. Think I'm going to be in better shape? We're, going, we're, playing, we're, playing, we're playing Oakmont together the day before. I know, but you're used to being shitty and at golf and playing hungover. I'm not. It's true. Kiz, what's your handicap coming in at? I think he said I'm a plus eight or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I actually, my team was looking it up. You keep a handicap, don't you? No. I thought somebody found it that you had a handicap. Um, but yeah, I think you're. Insane. I think you're a plus eight. That's what I think you are. That's fine. It doesn't really matter. As long as I don't have to make a birdie for a net par, we're good. Right. Because you're going to be plus eight. You go to plus four, 50% handicap. Uh, so the whole field will basically be getting four more shots that they would have gotten. Yeah, we're going to fucking steamroll them. I'll make six birdies, and you make six net pars. We shoot minus 12, and this fucking night-night nets. We go to Pinehurst. Whew. When's that? It's the second week in November. Mm. Yeah, I'm going to be out on that. <laughs> We'll, a lot of, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. A lot of pub around this match tomorrow uh, during the practice round of the Northern Trust. We'll, we're going to be there. It's Phil Mickelson and Joel Damon versus Keith Mitchell. What time are they and playing? Harry Higgs. I think 10 a.m. Is that is that? 10 a.m. Damn, I'm not even leaving, leaving Aiken by then. What do you think about a match like that? Who do you think's got the upper hand? Hard to say. Who's on teams again? Joel and Phil? Phil. Yep. Against Harry and who? Keith? Yep. yep. It all depends on how – Phil's the wild card. He can shoot 90 or 60. You never know. <laughs> <laughs> That's so true. In a setting like that, isn't he just so dialed in, though, where, like, money's flying around and, and guys are chirping each other? Isn't that when Phil's, like, at his best out there? <laughs> yeah, he loves that. He's got a, he thinks he has a great shit talking game, but he doesn't. And so that's why he doesn't like to play with me on Tuesday because I just put him in his place. In fact, I got a text on my phone. I should screenshot it and send it to you about him saying like, 
you always have the last word or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd put you up there. You're pretty fucking annoying to play with, for sure. <laughs> well, you were saying during that uh, the last match, you had tweeted that you they should give you a mic, and we fully agree with that because that would make it far more entertaining. On tour? Yeah. Or Got no, dur- dur- anytime, I guess, yeah. I'd be scared to death of the things I said on tour. No, we were talking about during the um, televised match, like the Bryson one. Yeah. Oh, God, I could handle that. I just meant, like, if I had a mic wearing, like, while I was competing, there's no telling the things I say. No, yeah, no. Well, that would be great, too. But you, I think, during the match would be even better. Like the Capital One match? Yeah. Well, they don't want, like, cool people, do they? Obviously, from who they're picking. (laughs) <laughs> i think you'd be i uh, you think you could ha- hold off from getting in trouble 100 percent. all right am i gonna get yelled at for this interview that i was supposed to be on for 20 minutes how long have i been on you only, you're, you're, only gonna gonna get, that glass you're only minute. gonna get in trouble from brit not from us we don't yeah should be all right My bottle's getting a little low. We um. Yeah, you're not the you're not the first one this week. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Hey, y'all trying to take my boy Pat Perez over, huh? We mean take him over. I love that guy. You know, he came up to me like two years ago and asked me to be on your podcast. That's how it all started, right? He was like, "I want to be on that four play podcast," and I was like, "Riggs will love you. I'll set y'all up on text." Blah blah blah, and then. Uh, what did he do? A podcast recently? Yeah, just on Thursday, dude. He was on for two hours and forty minutes. Yeah, so my socials blowing up that y'all just ditched me and Pat Perez was the new foreplay guy. And I was like, it's all good, guys. I'm not, I'm not <laughs> territorial of it. It's all good. Well, and then you went out and won. So clearly, yeah. you are. You know, there was some that might have been the motivation behind it. Some people were saying, Yeah, Pat, fucking win one, bitch. <laughs> I mean, you guys are both both very similar in the fact that you don't give a fuck and you just say what you want and you're both regular dudes. But I've never quite met anyone like Pat Perez. He's he's like 100 miles an hour all the time, man. He's got such crazy, crazy like beliefs and thoughts, especially within the golf world. And he'll just let you know. It's crazy. He's an interesting human, but he He is a sweetheart. He's the biggest sweetheart you'll ever meet. Like if you if you're on the wrong side of him, I feel like it's a problem. Like he, yeah, he big, doesn't like big problem. You don't want to be on the wrong side. Yeah, right. But we're but on I, the right side. And we went to he had us over for dinner after we beat him in our four minutes. Oh, Grandpa, it was be amazing. Nice, yeah. Yeah. He is he's a sweetheart. You're right. He's almost like a not a giant, but he comes off like gentle giant because he is like he is like bombastic and loud, but he's just so kind. It's like I can't think of that many people outside of clearly Rory Sabatini that are on like his negative side. Uh oh, here yep. we go. <laughs> we knew that was coming. Kids might Hi, Brittany. Uh... <laughs> no, no, she just wanted the wine. She said, yeah, I was gonna say, "Oh, yeah, we give her the wine." Friendly. Give me the wine, and also one kid's waiting on a. But y'all finish your work. One kid's waiting on a good night kiss. Oh boy, that's all good. That's good, good father right there. She said, Thank you, Brittany. Uh, she said, "Y'all just do your thing." You said you finish your work. She understands that we're grinding right now. Yeah, we're fucking killing it, man. <laughs> <laughs> so what do you actually um, think of our boy Trent here? I know you congratulated him, but breaking 100, massive milestone. I told JT, uh, I think he texted you or something, Trent, and said, all right, Trent, like, legit, we got to get this done. Well, like seven or eight to go or whatever on your seventh try or something mm-hmm. yeah and i said dude if it comes down to it if he keeps recording these fucking things i'm just gonna fly up there and ride around with him and show <laughs> him how to break 100 like no trent hit your fucking seven iron here no trent chip it over there okay we're done with this hole you shot 98 <laughs> let's go he was like all right please do that so people will quit fucking tweeting me <laughs> right because tillery he's the sweetest man in the world but i can pick up he really is, but I could pick up on every time I would FaceTime him after I failed, he would be upset because he knew that I wasn't practicing enough. He was like, you got to stop being out on the golf course and playing. You need to be practicing at five iron. You need to be like actually putting in the work. And 
I, at one point I wasn't. And then once I started to do that, it actually happened. But when I was just playing round after round after round, he was like, he's never going to get this done because he never practices. You can't just show up and all of a sudden lose 12 strokes, Trent. Right, <laughs> which is something I learned the hard way. And then once I started practicing, believe it or not, things got a lot easier and I played a lot better and I made it happen. Exactly. He's a sweet boy. I'm glad you picked him of all your people. I really do. Y'all be like best buddies for life. Could there be a better match? Could there possibly be a better match than those two? Like, they're the perfect yin and yang of each other. They're going to be best friends for life. Breaking 90. What's the first thing? What's the first thing Trent needs to work on? So, Trent, he was at Greensboro watching me hit balls and telling me how he was going to schedule you to come back down for some golf camp. I was like, fucking no Trent? Way. Are you worried about Trent? <laughs> We're trying to win on tour. Dude, Breaking oh, 90 is going to be a real. slicing my five iron, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Breaking 90 is important, man. That's like now we're starting to get to real numbers. If Trent starts to put up like an 88, 87, now we're playing some golf. So so what do you think? I don't know how much you've seen of Trent in, in these videos, but what's the what's like the major thing that he would need to work on to get into the 80s now? Because that's a whole nother level. The whole thing is around the greens. Yeah, Definitely. like he hits it plenty fine. The only thing I see is you act like a pussy, mm-hmm. and then you can't chip True. and putt. Like if you just didn't three putt. I'm so bad around the around the greens. That's 100 percent right. And how many times did I get that video of you telling JT that the only thing you don't need help with <laughs> was your putting? <laughs> No, that that wasn't that wasn't a joke. That wasn't anything. I was so confident that day uh, at Cusco Willow when we were around. He was like, "All right, what do you think we need to work on?" And I was like, "Well, I know the one thing we don't need to work on is funny. putting." <laughs> 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 and then I we went to fucking uh, Brookville, Ooh. and I, I maybe hit a hundred putts. It was as bad as it's ever been. Really, oh, really bad. No, you're right. Around the greens is is where I need to work. Put in the most through the ninety five. Think about if you only had if you only two putted every green, right? That's what I tell every amateur group I play with in proms. So when they run out there and they got twenty minutes before they play, they all go out there and chunk three wedges, grab a seven iron and hit maybe one good, and then hit six drivers and go to the tee. And then we get on the first hole and they hit the green or got there in three and then three putt, and then bitch about their double. I'm like, how many putts do you hit before we tee off? zero i'm like oh really well you know that you're gonna putt as much as you're gonna hit all the other shots throughout right. the day right you want to tell people have no idea like, don't you want to tell you're, you're <laughs> no i'm good i'm fine i don't want to talk like about it 30 times throughout the day you're gonna Rick talks me for but, that all the time he's like i see you on the range he's so like, hard for this stripe a seven iron stripe a five iron you say like we're good and then you go miss like 12 four footers in one round Right. It's miserable. As it's you just say, insane. Win. Like people obviously putty's not fun. It's not as fun as hitting balls. But my God, it counts the same. I will say I just got a good tip of holding a putter like you're holding a baby bird. And that's taken some of the stress out of it, which I like. Okay. Just take your thumbs off. I'm gonna work with a tip I got. I got I'm 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 <laughs> well, buzzing. It's the right same now. fucking concept, you weirdo. <laughs> I mean, I'd be taking uh, putting lessons from kids right now. Five, five. Hundred percent. But like, I, you know, I don't want to jump too far it's ahead. I just concept. got this one tip and it worked. Take your thumbs off. You hold it like a baby bird. I love when you put on those like moon shoe things that you you walk around. No, on. I hadn't yeah. used those in a while. I need to get that back. Well, whatever you did this week worked. Metronome was this week. Sixty-seven mm. beats. Use that for chipping too, or you change the you change the um, beat. Sixty sevens chip too. I'm pretty wow. sure. I don't know. I have my shipping coach for that. <laughs> I I think I'm drinking too much. <laughs> Cheers. Drink as much as you Cheers. want. You just champ, 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 mm. champ. <sighs> I know, but I kind of stuttered over the chipping coach, so I thought I was maybe getting a thick tongue. <clears throat> and then you just went straight for the glass of wine. Yeah, Trent. Where do you think you need the most work? Clear is that. it chipping, Trent? Um, no, I think it's putting. Putting. Yeah, I, I dude. When he shot the ninety-five, he made two eights and two sevens. Oh, and a majority oh. of those were around the greens, yeah. and that's an eighty-eight if you just play like competent. 
Yeah. Yeah, the putting. I, I still don't totally know what I'm doing on the greens. First hole. Driver. Frankie, in that fancy-ass uh, office you got there, you got a ball? You have a ball? Do I have a golf ball? Mm. Or any yes. ball. Football? Baseball? We got basketball. some. Not in this exact room. I can go get one. Why? What are we trying to do? I was just going to prove to Trent that he could be a good putter. Oh, oh I mean. Let me go get you a ball. Hold I would enjoy as a member of the show to watch that right now. Like There's got to be, really be maybe in the, maybe in the, yeah, maybe other studio. I would love to learn how to be uh, a better putter right now. Peter Millar, the greatest apparel company uh, known to man, and I very much mean that. Actually, and dead serious when I tell you that we get a lot of messages from people that are like, hey, I finally pulled the trigger on Peter Millar. Thank you guys for telling me about this stuff for the last several years because it's next level. It is the most comfortable. It performs phenomenally. You look great no matter where the ground works. Short. Kevin Kisner was rocking Peter Millar, rocks Peter Millar out there. He's Peter Millar athlete all uh, season long, and he looks great. I'm telling you, if you haven't trusted us yet, if you haven't, you know, pulled the trigger, gone to their website, picked out some pants, picked out some pullovers or some polos or some of their T-shirts or their sandals. Or, if you haven't done that yet, just trust us. Finally do it. I know if you, you've thought about it. I know you've seen some of the stuff that we're wearing. Just do it. Go pick out a couple items, okay? Go pick out a couple items. Go to petermillar.com slash four. Pick out a few items. Have those puppies delivered right to your home there. Put it on, wear it, and you will go back to PeterMillar.com slash four for the rest of your life because they make the best clothing, and it's not even close. It's not even close. And this experience that you're explaining where you just have to give it a try and see how it comes out, um, a guy by the name of Brock Nelson, American hero, good guy, plays hard, loves the game, New York Islanders, number 29, he finally just was like, you know what? I'm just going to order some Peter Millar, right? He's a big, like, tight pants guy, hockey guy on the golf course. He wanted to try, like, the ankle pant out. Um, he likes, you know, the tight fitting, everything. These hockey guys have a very unique, good style of golf clothes, wear, golf clothes wearing. He bought a couple of hoodies, a couple of polos, a couple of pants. I was getting text messages. He's like, I don't think I've ever felt anything like this in my entire life. Like he goes, I've ordered every sweatshirt hoodie I could possibly get from Peter Millar. And he's like, I'm not stopping. Like I, he goes, you wouldn't believe how much Peter Millar I'm getting. It's like every time he goes on the website, and this is how I am. Like, I'll just go through and be like, God, everything is good. And it's not just on the golf course. Like I was just saying, hoodies are good. T-shirts are good. I mean, I wore a full Peter Millar outfit to um, a, a, like a, dinner, a wedding rehearsal dinner. You can wear the pants, the polo. You look like a million bucks. Like, screw all these other companies. You go down Macy's, all these aisles, there's all these options. Like, Dude, Peter Millar is your one-stop shop for looking good. It's as simple as that. In a world where you need to dress well on the golf course and at work and at all these functions, why not just like have all Peter Millar? It's 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 like multifunction, good good looking clothes. Producer Jake plug real quick. Another thing you can Ooh. buy is literally at at Alabama, which you hear in this kids interview. They have any game day kind of shirt you could ever have. Every game day, I'm wearing a Peter Millar pullover or Peter Millar uh, polo. Even when we're on the golf course, they have Harvard. They have literally every like every kind of big college you can go to. So get they it for do. game day. That's true. Their college line and their MLB line, um, uh, they were able to get you know the the right licensing, whatever, and they they crush those lines. So Jake does rock that Bama uh, polo. We all try to chirp him, but it's hard because Bama is pretty sick. Um, PeterMillar.com slash four. Uh, and they're right, whether you're kind of more of a classic like vest, quarter zip, and polo guy, or whether you're more into modern, you know, hoodies, there's something in the new lineup of Crown Sport outerwear at Peter Millar for every type of guy. So head on over to PeterMillar.com slash four, explore the Crown Sport outerwear and the full range of Peter Millar apparel. Hey, uh, man, to say this, I keep seeing his name pop up on the bottom, but why doesn't Jake say hello to me, you asshole? Turn that mic on. Here we go. Hey, Kevin. Hi, Jake. How do you feel about <laughs> Alabama ba uh, football? I feel pretty good because your quarterback has the worst mustache in the world. So mustaches declare if you can throw a football or not? <laughs> yeah, I don't think JT Daniels has worked anything. I think Bryce – not a lot, not enough people are talking about Bryce Young. And the, I talked to JT. The guy that made a, mil a million dollars before he's ever thrown a college pass. Well, he has thrown college passes, and so is your boy, and your boy sunk. Uh, he got a $7 million deal today, too, or a seven-figure deal. Really? Yeah, JT Daniels lands a seven-figure uh, potential deal with uh, 
some trading card company. Say that Ooh. again. Did you say potential? Yeah. Well, no, that was seven hours ago, mm -hmm. and now I'm looking at six hours, and he does sign the deal. Oh, shit. Man, they're all going to act like their legs hurt. <laughs> all right, kids, I got a ball here. All right. How far can y'all spread apart with us being able to see us? See y'all. Um, here, yeah, take that camera. Jake's going to punch Can you zoom it out? It out? Yeah, zoom it out. There we go. Okay. All right. All right, that's, that, uh, Frankie, go to the left like ten more or three more feet. Okay. All right, Frankie, hold your hand up. All right, Trent, throw the ball into his hand. So how the fuck do you not have touch? <laughs> I that that's right, right? If I'm able to do that, I should be able to putt. That's right. How can you not fucking <laughs> roll a ball to a hole? You just threw a ball twelve feet away right to his hand, and now that there's this little fucking hole and you're holding this little hunk of metal, I can't just roll a ball over there near it. I get the, the point fuck? I get the point that you're making, but it's not apples to apples. It's not, but it's close enough. It can is can you shoot a free throw? Yeah. Like you can get it within range. When I see you hit a 30 foot or 20 feet by, I'm worried about you. <laughs> Me too. <man. laughs> Me too. Cause that's, that would be like you throwing that ball through the wall over there. Right? <laughs> no, you're right. That, when you put it like imagine that. if you just, imagine if he said to you, throw that ball to Frankie's hand and you just <laughs> slammed it through I the wall. Through the that's window onto I the street. On when he hits the putt. On like, the streets oh of New York God. City. He just broke the screen of the fucking TV back there. No, you're right. That That's how I have to think about it because, honestly, when I'm putting, I do not think about it that way. I'm thinking, right. I'm th you're thinking about making the putt. Right. And we never want to think about making the putt. We only want to think about speed. I like it. God, that toss was so good. You hit the palm of my hand. I didn't have to move. I mean, he right. killed it. Killed Imagine it if perfect. he crow hopped. He just crow hops and throws it as hard as he can through the wall. And he was like, yeah, I was trying to throw it. To Literally, you, when his arm went back, I go, what do I say when he fucks this up? <laughs> okay. Uh, it is all about speed. Uh, yeah, my speed on the greens is as bad as it can be. You got to try not to make putts to make putts. That's interesting. Yeah. So you'll make more putts trying not to make them than you are trying to make them. Is that an so amateur as soon way as of I thinking? I try to make a six footer, I'll knock it four feet by. That's for and amateurs no only. You don't think that way. Hundred percent. I'm just trying to fucking get it up there near the hole, and if it goes in, it's <laughs> that's, unbelievable. That's so crazy to me. That's interesting. Like at what what distance do at you what does distance, that go yeah. off? Like obviously the four footer to win. You're like anything outside of four feet. Okay. I'm just like, all right, get your speed right. You know basically it's going to break three or four inches but if your speed's wrong it's not going to break at all or it's going to break way too much wow i love how you're in the pitch black dark now you started out do you want like, me to, i was just thinking that i need to turn these lights on <laughs> oh, I've been out here yeah i like too we can just hear like the crickets out in your in your lawn yeah just welcome to the south boys you nice. gotta go do your thing oh yeah yeah i can but it's i mean you can go I was gonna Big go. Night. I was gonna go live tweet the Bachelorette. The, the, it's Bachelor in Paradise. Oh, wow. oh the Bachelor in Paradise. That's Bachelor right. in Paradise, and the, you got to see this set they're building out here at Barstool headquarters. You got thirty really? workers in the middle of the, of, of the main room just drilling in like what looks like a tiki hut. And like, if you don't go watch it, you're not. Yeah, gonna, I'm not gonna be able to show. recap it that well. Yeah, but go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. You're 22 minutes late. I'm a little late. It's all right. right. I've, I've, I really appreciate that you're skipping out on the Bachelorette for me. Like, I'm. I feel like I'm the only guest in four play definitely. history you would skip Bachelorette for. 100. percent And I think uh, you know you you're coming off a huge win, and I didn't want to be disrespectful to that win and, and jump out of here. But uh, I am gonna jump out of here now. I think. Yeah. <laughs> go for it, buddy. You needed a lifeline. I think. I'm gonna jump out of here too. Yeah, Kevin, congratulations! Seriously, love it. Loved watching you guys, the whole team, Dewey, Till. I'm just, I'm really proud of you guys. Congratulations! Hey, when you're coming back to Cuscoilla, hit me up on Twitter since you don't have my phone number and let me know. I will. <laughs> I hope you never get each other's phone numbers. It's always, I don't want. It's I think, a little I think we're not going to now. We're just I don't want it. He says. Yeah, I don't, I don't want yours either. But I, I'm going to be going down there hopefully sometime soon, and it'd be a real shame if we ran into each other. Yeah, it would suck, wouldn't it? It would. Maybe we'll have to go jump off that rock holding hands together. <laughs> I'm in. 
I'm all, right, all the way in. Done. All right. Fucking put, book it. All right. Congrats Bachelorette, again. You're in. See ya. That's <laughs> so good. So good. The rest of your team Can't ever get like, to get back um, to golf camp. He's like Dewey and Till are now like famous. Is the rest of your team like what the fuck? <laughs> what the fuck? What do you mean? Just like I don't know. Like you got, like, Tom, two, like your boys. Yeah, he like Tom, rattled that like, he's Tom. like. <laughs> yeah. Do we need to get Tom involved now? Old Tom. Old Tom. No, we're good, bud. Everybody's good. Life's good. Definitely. Life is good. Are you, yeah, I, like, what are you what are you gonna do? When are y'all coming to Liberty tomorrow? We'll be there. Yeah, yeah we got that for that match. We're gonna go walk with those guys and Perfect. Got, I'll be there right after that match. Y'all can walk with me. Ooh. Yeah. We'll see you. Amazingly, we'll just see you tomorrow. Have you ever been to um I was wondering this. Have you ever been to the Barstool office, by the way? No, I was supposed to come that one time and then I bailed on you. Because That's I was crazy. in the city. I was in the city with my daughter and we were like showing her around and I tried to come meet you and then like traffic was shitty and I just told the driver to take me back. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Um, well, yeah, I don't know if we can fit it in. Probably not, but maybe I'll do Dave's lesson in the office. There we go. What would you work on if you only had the office? Well, I mean, can y'all not have a simulator there? No. Jesus, Dave, iron. get it together, bud. We got a five iron. We got that new. Uh, we have Net Returns, one of our new sponsors. Hit it into a oh, net. Yeah. Just gotta get I don't need I, as ADD as his ass is. We don't need much time. Listen, man, he's an athlete. He's got the swing. He just needs to get some swings in. We'll get some swings in these next two weeks here. Like, I mean, he's got the skill to be able to put it all together. But can he put it all together is the is the thing we got to work on. Like 100%. He's got to go play a, like three or four times before yeah. the match. Like a Shinnecock, he was like clearing from like the back tips, like 240 yard, like marshy, shitty it. areas. Yeah, he, was, that, like, he was, he was. Like he was fucking fescue areas to hit the fucking fairways. And then on the greens, he was drilling. Yeah, but feet. Frankie, it's easy when you know if I don't hit this one good, I have another one. Totally. I agree. I also, man, I just can't picture Brooks going out there. Just fucking shooting an eighty five is crazy to me. Crazy. He's not ambidextrous. Yeah. He doesn't he doesn't like grow up a lefty. Dude, if you played lefty and, and if you played lefty and like trained or hit some balls for a little bit, a month or whatever, what do you think you'd shoot? Ninety. Well, I 90? mean from sixty five hundred yards I'd shoot ninety. Yeah. Damn. I hit a seven iron like a hundred and forty five yards. And you know like Damn. you're not you're not like Hosling them and like it's crazy. no, I'll chunk the shit out of one and whatever, but not if I'm competing. I'm not gonna do that. That'd be <laughs> stupid. <clears throat> the other thing, though, it's just like how well all you guys get up and down. Like, you're gonna find a way to get up and down. Like, you talked about the first playoff hole, and you're like, how the hell we all make par? It's like you fucking guys are insane how good you guys are about just getting in the hole. So, I think that ability of just knowing golf courses, knowing how to get the ball in the hole is going to help Kepka a ton because mentally he's there and I'm sure yeah. he's still going to roll it really, really well. Yeah. I just so, don't want Dave to roll in thinking that the mental game is going to be the only ticket to the victory. No, we got it. We got it. There's only so much shit you can talk. And if your skills aren't up to par, then it's just, you're still going to lose. And I want Dave to beat his ass. I agree. I agree. So, I'm offering free help, Prez. Bring it on. It's a good offer. Frankie's probably on the Dex offer. chain yeah, tonight offer. or tomorrow. It's a fantastic offer. There's no way around it. <laughs> we'll make it happen. Yep. Can, you, uh, can we give him an Adderall before we start so he'll stay on task for 30 minutes? Yeah, I think because we're kind of regulating this, I think we can – Whatever PEDs we need, we can. Um... <laughs> totally, that's fine. We'll allow that. Yeah, it's gonna be a scene out there. It's gonna be so funny. Are you gonna go to the? When is it? When is the match? September seventh. It's gonna be live streamed, so everyone can be able to watch it. Um, Damn, I should caddy. I can't caddy. Never mind. Who's caddying for Dave? I am. Holy shit! I got the to- I got the staff bag. 
I'm getting the the master's outfit. Who's catting for Brooks? Big Cat and PFT from part of my take. All right, so I definitely want Dave, Dave to win that. Why don't you? Yeah. September 7th. I don't know what you got going on, but you should just come on our team then. Be his fucking. It's my son's fourth birthday, September 7th. Henry? Yeah. How's he doing? Did I? Did y'all see that video of Henry telling that joke on my personal Instagram? I don't think so. I got to send that shit no. to y'all. No, you got to send that to Henry us. stole the show at our when we were when we played with you. All right, hopefully it goes through soon. I sent it to you three. But you know who I didn't send it to? Trent. Trent. <laughs> you know why? Because you'll never get his number. I want you guys to, like, grind to be able to communicate. You know what I mean? I want it to be like, <laughs> like fuck, we missed each other yesterday because I didn't check Twitter. But next time you're in town, let me know. And then you're like, well, I did. DM me, me, dog. DM yeah. me. <laughs> it just needs to be a grind. Like, it should never be easy. That's a fact. I know that's how we're going to keep it. It'll be all good. He's a freaking angel, though. Y'all can't ever hate on my boy Trent too much. He's the That's biggest nice angel. Guy. He's the nicest guy of all time. <laughs> Can I get an apple fart? <laughs> I don't know. Because it was truly fruity. <laughs> <laughs> what a legend, Henry. <laughs> I mean, how good is that shit? He's three years old, just acting like he can read because he can't read so he did that straight off of memory, memory. Yeah, that's so good, <laughs> that, so that good. So good. You, just, you should be on like his performance was electric the fact that he could come up kids are amazing man him like being able to just come up with that knowing it's gonna play that's fantastic <laughs> i loved it so he's turning four september 7th were you guys throwing a party? So I, uh, not till that weekend. So I asked them today that uh, my partners at Chicora, where you went, Riggs, we have our big partners meeting on September 7th and a dove shoot. And I said, hey, buddy, you want to go with me to Chicora and pick up all the doves after I shoot them? And he's like, hell yeah, daddy. <laughs> so we're going to dove hunt on his birthday. Nice. Hope you guys, you know see more doves than we saw ducks i hope that's the case i know you i think you're just bad luck it's possible definitely possible um what else is going on kids i gotta pee yeah all right we can let you go that's about it man i'm gonna go to bed and wake up and take my daughter to school and then i'm gonna fly to new york Pick Dewey up on the way. All right, tell tell Dewey hello for us. Send us some. Um, yeah, capture that video of arrival. Capture something. Him getting on the plane or just standing on the tarmac, confused or something. Just waving like Forrest Gump. <laughs> I hope he's on the tarmac holding your golf bag, waving you like Forrest Gump as you arrive. I don't even know where my clubs are, to be honest. <laughs> I haven't seen them since I finished. I don't have them currently. So either he has them or they're in New York. That's amazing. Really? Yeah, I don't know where they are. What do you mean you don't know where they are? Ooh. I literally don't have my clubs. Would you usually or typically have your clubs after a tournament? Or I'd give them to Ben Holka, who drives our stuff from week to week. So I'm assuming Dewey went and packed all my shit and gave them to Holka, but I really don't know. <laughs> What a That's surprise crazy. that would be tomorrow if you're all just yeah, right. your clubs. Still in Sedgefield, just sitting there. Exactly. You know what we can do? We can get new ones. <laughs> they hit, new driver, they hit the same. You could get a full new – if you showed up tomorrow or Wednesday and you had no clubs, they were stolen, you'd just get a whole new set out of the truck and you'd be fine, like nothing mattered. Yeah, when you hit the middle of the face and your club face was square, they go straight. <laughs> Oh putter God. and everything that wouldn't bother you. They can build a putter just like the same one. It's good mindset. It's pretty crazy. That is crazy. You wouldn't have like a, I don't know. You got to break them in type feel or anything. Yeah, I know. The only issue is the wedges because they're so new and crispy. You'll be spinning the shit out of them. Yeah, I hate when that happens to me. Do you ever take wedges and like take sandpaper to them and try to get that off or no? 
No, nah, I just go in the bunker and whack like 20 bunker shots with them. Do you really? Yeah. That's great. Because that grinds them down a little bit? Yeah, it just gets like that. Like you just don't want the the flight to change. So when they're super spinny, they don't go in the air. They just go low and spinny. So you want them to hit your window. So you just whack a few bunker shots, and then Dewey grinds off the sand, and then they're ready to roll. Do you remember the goalie Artis Urbe? Anybody? No. He used to take his goalie pads and run them over with his truck to get like the fibers out of his goalie pad to get him like relaxed. Hell yeah. yeah. That's a big yeah. hockey guy move right there. Big hockey guy move. Where are you staying, Riggs? Jersey City. Nice. Me too. We're probably not too far. I think, yeah, I'm at a hotel in Jersey City. It looks Last like time we were there, kids, we had dinner and Riggs passed out at the table. You remember that? It look, yeah, I do. Yeah, you and I met that rooftop bar and then Riggs just couldn't make it. He was just asleep at the table. And they were like, Dude, you guys need to go? Okay. We're like, well, we're fine. He'll wake up. Do you remember how bad the service was at that restaurant? Service you guys outrageous. remember that? Yes. It took it's hours. outrageous. It was. Of course I fell asleep. They wouldn't service our fucking food. <laughs> that was ridiculous. He was like, like two at a certain point, hours. I got to go home. I got to wake up soon to like prep for tomorrow. Like, I get like, <laughs> this is absurd. We that ordered like bad. chicken. Somebody bring it out of the back. It's like a chicken sandwich. Takes five minutes. All right, well, let's do let's do dinner tomorrow. I'll see y'all up there. All right, you coming to Jersey, Frankie? You staying out here? Yeah, it just made sense. Let's go. Um, yeah, kids. I bet we're really close to you. There's like I saw signs for like the parking for the tournament, like right next to the hotel. Yeah, I'll be right there. I don't I don't want to publicly announce where I'm staying on the foreplay podcast, but. I think I'm doing Jersey out of the City lobby. Ain't no hobby. to fucking Montauk to Jersey City Mo- Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I think I may have to fly a helicopter or something. There's no way I can make that drive there and back. Oh. Done. All right. Y'all line up dinner tomorrow. I'll see you in the afternoon. All right. Later, kids. Well done, kids. Good luck this Congrats, week, Congrats, Kizzy. Thank you, boys, for having me. Y'all be good. Thanks, brother. We'll see you tomorrow. All right. All right. Sounds good. Yeah.